Howdy, howdy folks, it is Diecast Buffet here again. Welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003. It's time for the Pocono 500. Race 14 out of 36 in the year of 2005. Well, folks, we, we dominated. We dominated last race at New Hampshire. I mean, we're talking, we, we blew them out of the water, right? So we got a big W after just... I mean, to be honest with you, a miserable Talladega and Coke 600. So we really needed that. But we're still a buck 38 behind in the points. And your good old points leader, Sterling Martin. Look, don't sleep on him. He might he might have had an off year last year. But let me tell you, he has no wins. He has no polls. Okay? But the dude's bleeding the points by 40, ironically, in the 40 car. But I, I'm still rooting for Johnson. I think Johnson could break through. Now, the, the upcoming schedule, this is the start of the summer stretch, guys. We're going to Pocono. This is the first race of the 05 summer. All right, so where we're going to go, we're going to go to Pennsylvania. We're going to go to Michigan, and then this is the, the, the three-race wild card stretch. Look, we've seen cats like Casey Atwood. We've seen cats like Kate, uh, Jamie McMurray. We've seen Jimmy Johnson. We've seen some upset winners here in this stretch of races right now, and it, it could change the outcome of the season. Um, it is definitely a hot spot of the season, but um, we're gonna we're gonna run. Uh, let's run the Bassmaster joint, and uh, let's go to Pocono. All right, folks. So we qualified in the top ten. Jimmy Spencer is on pole. Here we go, it's in a down track side here in Long Pond, Pennsylvania, the Pocono 500. MRN is live in Pennsylvania today at the Pocono Raceway for the Pocono 500. This track produces some of the fastest racing of the year, but it also presents some special challenges to the drivers. Well, this is one of NASCAR's toughest tracks, especially for the crews who set up these race cars. Nothing is the same in any aspect of this racetrack. Three totally different corners, three straightaways of different lengths. It's enough to drive a crew chief crazy. Jeff Burton has a solid top 10 spot in the standing so far. You know, all these guys are very happy with their top 10 season so far. Hopefully they can mount a charge that will pick them up some more points on the leaders. Greg Biffle really needs a good finish in this race. He's got a long way to go on the points list. Yeah, those guys have been working so hard this year. It's a shame it doesn't really show in points. Just seems they can't keep that car out of trouble on race day. Maybe their luck will change today. Jeff Green hasn't run well on his qualifying attempts at the speedways this year. Makes it tough to get a good finish when you start in the back. Even if you have a fast car, you still spend the whole race working through the traffic. You always have to be on the lookout for the big one. Engines are fired. Once again, it's it's the man, the myth, the legend, Jimmy Spencer out front next to Jeff Gordon on pole. So we qualify ninth. Not a bad starting spot. I'll be honest with you. I'll take it. Look, we're going to Pocono. We're like, what, 138 points out of the points championship. Now, last year, we got off to a rocky start, but we came back and won the championship. The summer stretch is my favorite portion of the year. It's, it's the bridge between the, the early jitters of the season and shaping up the final run to the championship. It's it's like the last, okay, we'll get on next week type of uh, season, right? You know, uh, in terms of actual weather seasons. After the summer is over, it's pretty much, okay, no more mulligans straight to the title. And that's why I love the summer stretch. It's kind of like a relaxing time of the NASCAR season. And here we go, green flag in the first Pocono race of the year. This is going to go, this is going to be interesting. We're going to have to figure this one out. The first Pocono race traditionally does worse for us. For some reason, the first Pocono race is a little bit worse for us, but I'm confident we can potentially, potentially try to get a good run here. I, I, I'm confident that we can try to get a good run and just try to get a top 10. That's what I want. I just want a top 10 finish today. The tunnel turn is going to be... Oh, man, this, this this turn is a pain in the rump. There is no there is no sugarcoating it here. There is no smoke and mirrors. Uh, 
Suit. It looks like Tony Stewart's got a pretty decent Pontiac. Jimmy Spencer dropping like a bag of coal on Christmas Day. Wow. Whoa, 25 car there. Car got a little tight. So right now we're drafted behind the Cheerios Dodge Intrepid. Uh, I'm not sure who's out front now. Looks like maybe Smoke Show. No, Junebug. Junebug is leading here at Pocono. And let's be honest here. Dell Jr. hasn't done nothing all year long since the 500. He won it, but he's been quite, been, you know, quite quiet. Ironically enough, got some contact back there uh, behind us, but he hasn't done nothing. This would be a great opportunity to get his season kind of, you know, shaping up towards the the championship run. You know, a lot of these drivers, they're not going to be back in 06. You know, Martin, Terry Labonte, Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, Ricky Rudd. These drivers could all walk away after 05. So. At this point, anything is possible. Even Bill Elliott, you could throw him in the mix. I mean, anything's possible right now. Oh, Nelly. Let's see. Oh, God. Oh, 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 oh Nelly. Digging, though. We're going to keep digging. We're going to see how the strategy plays out. We might be able to, you know, take a gamble here. I don't know. Depends how the tire situation is. We might be able to take some, take some strategy calls. Who knows? Let's we'll see how it plays out. You know, we're, we're only a quarter in today, today's race. So, I mean, we still got, what, 15, 16 more laps around this joint. We could uh, try to win this thing, man. I mean, who knows? Who knows? We could try to win it. Oh, boy. Here we go. Lap five. And your leader right now, still junior, Gordon Wallace Kenseth and Tony Stewart. Uh, we're gaining a little bit on this rookie car here, but just, I just... We don't have, like, consistent overall speed. I feel like we're being a little bit too leisurely around the racetrack. We need to be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do. I want to try to start being a little bit more aggressive. But it's hard to without making contact. Oh, speaking of contact, we made a little bit of a, a scrape right there on Terry Labonte. Oh, Nelly. We almost pancaked the door there. With a tunnel turn, I, I've said it every time I go to Pocono, but I'll say it again. Every time you go to, to Pocono, the tunnel turn, the, the best way to get around it is with the throttle and not the brake. It's one of the few turns in NASCAR where you turn with the throttle and not the brake. It's really weird. You go into it, you're like, oh my god, I'm going to slow down, I'm about to hit the wall. And then you actually hit the wall. But if you go in the corner and ignore that kind of like sense of, oh my god, I'm about to wreck, if you ignore that racing sense and actually go to the throttle i almost promise you you will make the corner it's insane but that's that's just the magic of pocono man that's why it's it's a really fun stop on the circuit yeah we're, we're kind of fighting back i think the ais have burnt up their good years enough to kind of give us a little bit of leeway but like right here i'm hitting the gas and the car's rotating if i would have hit the brakes i would have been in the side of the 41 and the 32. I want to do what's best for the race team, too. I want to make sure we don't try anything crazy, but I think at worst, staying out would probably get us a top 10. But if it does play out and we have the fresh tires and the AIs are a little bit slower, that might give us one to two laps where we can make up five to 10 spots. Who knows? I, I don't know. It just depends how good the laps fall and how good the tires are. You know, our tire wear is pretty good. We've managed nine laps and only the front tires just started getting yellowed on lap eight so we're doing pretty good on tire wear i must say but i i can see a tremendous fall off like right here in turn one i mean just my god car is just dropping like a rock so tire wear is going to be a huge factor and if we pit right now our tires are going to be shot they're going to be shot on lap 17 let's not do that let's stay out as long as we can right and try to get the best, uh, you know, late run car we can get. That's the secret to Pocono. Different pit strategies. So if everyone and their mother comes down pit road, we're going to have to pit, right? But if two or three cars at least stay out, we'll, we'll, we'll stay out. Look, they're not pitting. So these cats that already came in and got their service, sure, they already got their service. But let's be real, they're banking on a caution. They're, they're still in the lead lap. They're banking on a caution where they'll be out front. But the problem is, is that their tires are going to be so shot that even if they did catch a yellow, 
they're going to be good for a few laps, and they're going to get destroyed because their tires are going to be roached, and everyone else is going to have four fresh Goodyears. So there is a problem to that. I'm willing to take two, but is it the right gamble? I don't think so. I think we're good on four tires. I think, look, we're running down the leaders, to be honest with you. Their tires are much older than ours, so I think staying on four tires is the good strategy because if our tires are any worse than theirs, well, we're going to be in a bind. I think now is the time to pit. I think now is the time to pit. I think they're going to come in. Look, yeah, I'm coming in. I, I, even though they're staying out, I'm coming in now. There we go. Come and get some service. No damage repair. Keep everything the same. Car's handling pretty good. Let's get our service. Good, clean pit stop. There shouldn't be anyone on pit road, really. So we shouldn't get blocked. But you never know. <laughs> you never know. Hopefully, we get a good, uh, clean pit stop in. Junior's on pit road, so we did pit at the right time. Come on, like a 15.6. Oh, of course. Of course, the lug nuts. Of course. Good lord. I, I guess they still buy these, um, these pit crew guns at the, at the dollar store, I guess. Freaking 17, 18th, nearly a 19 second pit stop at Pocono. Jesus. I mean, that's ridiculous, man. Alright, so look, we got ahead of Junior, so he must have had a bad pit stop, but now we're in the, the Hornet's Nest. I should have took two. That was a, just a terrible pit stop for the team. And that more than likely will cost us the opportunity at the win. I don't know, though. I don't know. The AI loses a lot of speed on old tires, but the tires are going to be... They're going to be moderately worn at the... Um, at the final lap of this race, but look at the ground we're gaining on Jeff Purvis and Jimmy Spencer. They haven't pitted yet, I don't think. I mean, we're just gaining just caboodles amount of freaking time here. Wow. Uh, is anybody gonna come down pit row? Nobody's gonna pit, nobody, okay. We'll keep digging. Get a little bit of a sniff off the Pontiac and uh, see how this whole thing's gonna sort out. Jesus, man, we lost so much time there, dude. Like, I I'm hoping these cats haven't pitted yet because if they have, we're screwed. Like, we are screwed if these guys have already pit. Oh, boy. Let's see. Rudd's out front. So, yeah, there's some cats who haven't pitted because Rudd hasn't pitted. Kenseth, I think Marlin. So, we're still going through the pit cycle. This is the, the, the cars who stayed out to the absolute max opportunity. Oh boy, these guys might be coming down pit road, so we might want to get out of harm's way. I think Spencer's coming in. I'm going to try to get to the outside, but they're, they're everywhere, man. They're freaking everywhere. I'm trying to get around these bozos. Biffle, thank you. Thank you, Biffle. Please don't hit me, Biffle. Okay, these guys are staying out. Okay. Well, that's cool. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe not so fast. Maybe everyone has pit. And the guys who are out front, the cars who already pitted earlier, and they're they're going to use up their tires quicker, and they're not going to be out front much longer. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, we're going to go to the outside and turn one and get around Bobby Hamilton. Wow. So yeah, that pit stop, that three seconds we've lost is going to just kill us in the final position. Oh my god, man. I mean, it's just ridiculous, man. A 20 point swing in track position pretty much that is just unbelievable uh, that's part of winston cup racing man some days you're the bat some days you're the ball i mean it's not over though we still got what four laps to go i think we can still get a top 10 if we try hard enough but man that's that's just this first pocono race for some reason it just hits us with a hammer and of course junior now how does this work junior cut came in before us He's freaking fourth place. I'm guessing he had a flawless pit stop in that red car we seen behind us with someone else. And he uh, took advantage of those three seconds he gained on us. We're up to 18th, though. Just too little too late, you know. A caution would be great, but... You know how that works. Ooh, Nelly Carr got pretty tight there off the, the tunnel turn. We're catching a sniff off the Kellogg's Monte Carlo. Man, that just... That takes the wind out of your sails sometimes. Ooh, Nelly. Car's gonna get really tight off the corner. 
we didn't bring the best Pocono car, but we definitely had an opportunity for a top five. You know, I definitely think we had a top five opportunity, and this is not the way you want to end your day in Pocono. We still got a few more laps to go, but it's just too little too late, man. 63, I'm sorry. Didn't mean to. So we're up to 16th. We got Jamie McMurray in the 7, and we got Bobby Labonte in the 18. Who knows how lo how much longer he's going to be with Joe Gibbs Racing. That could, uh, that could uh, break apart very soon. Who knows? Man, this is just... We're just trying, man. We're just trying to get top 10 here. And it's just not happening. Junior probably is going to... He's going to probably drive around Ricky running them. Yeah, he's already up to second. He's about to blow the doors off Kenseth. And he's pretty much about to get his second win of the season. Because a caution right now would end the race. And uh, he's got clearly a better race car than Kenseth. And you can clearly see there's just a mile gap between... Uh, 13th place, so we can catch Labonte probably, but I don't think we're going to catch Craven and company. I think that's uh, a ship that has sailed, but you know, we did everything we had to do, though. We pitted at the right time. We pitted at the right time. We stayed out like we were supposed to. We took care of the race car. He just had a bad pit stop, and that's just, sometimes that just happens, you know, and uh, unfortunately, We'll have to settle for outside the top 10 finish. And it looks like Junior is going to be uh, partying in the Poconos. Oh, God. The car just got extremely tight there. That's going to kill all our momentum. But can't win them all. We'll go to uh, Michigan next. And Michigan's a great track for us. We've won so many ra races there. I look forward to it. You know, I look forward to Michigan. I think we can certainly win something. Johnson's going to try it. He's going to try it. I'm going to block him. There we go. Yeah, even Labonte got around uh, Craven there. But, you know, it's going to be a very, uh, very long final lap. But it's okay, though. We'll go to Michigan next. And then after Michigan, it's it's kind of the, the, the three-race wildcard stretch. That is going to change up the standings big time. It always does. Heck, Johnson even got a victory at the Daytona Road Course using some pitch strategy. We've seen Jamie McMurray win. We've seen... Even uh, Casey Atwood, before he retired, we even seen him win a race. So, I mean, that that uh, Daytona road course, it, it, it's a pitch strategy, you know, hot spot. More likely or not, we're going to see an upset winner at one of those three races. And that's what makes it so exciting because anyone could win those races, man. Anyone. And that's what makes it exciting. Oh, my God, man. We're just driving it into turn one like crazy. We, we can get around Craven here for 14th, though. His car is shot. We can get around him. Top 5 update. Gordon might actually steal the win. He's out front right now. Uh, he could be partying in the Poconos. Earnhardt might not be able to win this one. We'll do the tunnel turn. Just try to see if we can get a run on the 32 car. I mean, his his car, it's cooked. It's cooked. And we should be able to get around here in, in turn 3. Just see, we'll try to run him a little high. Go rotate, rotate. There we go. We'll finish 14th today at Pocono. Not what we wanted, but hey, we made the most of a terrible pit stop that was not of our doing. But hey, go on to Michigan next. I believe Gordon just won the race. Jeff Gordon edges out Dale Jr. for the Pocono 500, and Gordon's second win of 2005. Well, that was a. Uh, Eh, that was a mad race, but you know what? We'll, we'll keep digging. We'll keep it digging. Uh, Junior gets second. He led 11 laps. He got uh, 10 bonus points, but Gordon led the last few laps that mattered. And, uh, well, he's going to victory lane at Pocono. Uh, big win for Hendrick Motorsports and the 24 team. Well, we got 14th for the Sicko for Taurus at a Roush. Racy Jeff Burton, ugh, shy of a top 10, but... It's okay. We'll keep it digging. Thank y'all so much for watching the video. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss any of my new content, guys. Follow me on Instagram at DieCastBuffet. Hope you're having a great one. DieCastBuffet. Signing off.